So we got the bottom end all done, the oil pump on, and getting ready to put the oil pan on. And then we'll flip it over. We're cleaning up the heads now. We got them all. Don't freak out, it's sitting on foam. On foam so it's not sitting on the actual head surface. I've got them cleaned up and looking nice. Um, working on the valves right now. They look pretty crusty. I'm glad I popped this motor apart. Number five intake had mud dauber's nest all in it. But as you can see, these valves will clean up right nice. And get all this gunk off of them. And then we'll lap them back in. I don't think they had any sealing issues, but when we lap them back in, it'll, it'll assure that we don't have any sealing issues. So we'll get them all cleaned up, new valve stem seals, and uh, then we'll be ready to put them back on. So that's where we're at right now. I'm working on it. All right, so I got the heads cleaned up, got the valves cleaned up. And the way I lap my valves in, I just take some um, some valve grinding compound, put it on put it on my valve right here, put a little Vaseline on my valve guide, stick it in the head, chuck my old drill up on the valve, and just... Uh, Instead of using the old suction cup thing that never did really working very well, I uh, do it with the old drill, and uh, they come out pretty, lap them pretty good. You just got to make sure you wipe every bit of the valve grind compound out of here with a uh, paper towel when you get done, so it doesn't uh, rinse down in your cylinders or or um, wear your, your valve seats out worse. Just make sure you wa wash that uh, grinding compound out of there real good. Um, and once you do that, then you're ready to put the seals and the springs and keepers and all back on. All right, guys. Now the heading of this uh, this little series is uh, budget 350 build, and the budget part of it is the crank and the block were in tolerances, so we didn't bore the block and we didn't turn the crank, but we didn't skimp on any parts. We used quality bearings, quality rings, we used a melon oil pump, and Felpro gaskets. Now these small block Chevrolets. The early style had an O-ring in this groove of the valve. And that was the valve stem seal that kept the oil from going down the valve stem and causing uh, oil smoke when you first crank the motor up. Now, um, the, the 90s model 350s, they started using, well, and even before the 90s, they started using this umbrella style seal right here it's a soft rubber and um, but in the 90s this seal was an exhaust seal and they used a, um, a Viton seal for the intake, gas, uh, intake valve so here's the difference it's a thick rubber with ring reinforcements on it or whatever. Now the way to the way to put these on is usually your set will come with this little tool right here. And what it does is it covers up the grooves in the valve and make it easier to put the seal on. Because if the seal gets caught in them grooves, it's really, really hard to get it past them. So you Put the seal on the valve, 
slip it past those seals, I mean, the um, valve grooves in there. And it's hard to do with one hand. Push the valve, I mean, push the seal all the way down on the, uh, on the stem tower. And then push the valve up. So now we have all the exhaust seals on and we're going to move on to the intake seals. Same same principle. You put your tool on the valve stem and then you insert your your seal on the tool. And then push it push it down to the valve guide. Now because of the the spring pressure with these uh, metal reinforcements here, you might need to use a um, socket that fits your valve and just push it down until it fully seats on the valve guide. Now you got all your your seals on your valve guides installed properly. And this is a lot better oil control than just the o-ring. The o-rings if if you go a while without running your engine they'll get hard and crack and then your oil control will be gone. These these seals seal a lot better and you generally don't have that kind of problem. Actually this head actually had the o-rings on the exhaust and this style intake seal these seals were still intact, but the O-rings were totally gone. So this this motor, if I hadn't went through it, it would have smoked on crank up on the exhaust side. All the exhaust valve seals were gone. But that's how you do that. So now we're just going to take the spring compressor and assemble the um, the valve springs on this thing. Okay, it's real hard to do with one hand, but there's your valve spring compressor. The head of it goes on the head of the valve, and the top of it goes on the valve spring and compresses the spring. And then you have um, keepers that, that go in. It's a wedge. drop down and hold the valve in. And then you let off the valve spring compressor and the keeper come I um, mean the uh, keeper comes up and or the retainer comes up and holds the keepers in and the keeper keeps pressure on the keepers and keeps it from coming out. So that's all it is to it. Hard to show and do with one hand, but that's the basic principle of it right there. Alright, so we got all our new um all our new valve stem seals in and all our valves installed. And everything cleaned up nice. These springs match the roller cam that was installed in that 350 to 15 years ago or whatever. Um, like I said, we we numbered all our valves before we disassembled the engine, and every valve went back in the same same spot. We cleaned everything up, lapped them all in. And uh, now they're ready to go back on. So 
like I said, this this wasn't a high budget build. Like I said, it's a low budget build. Everything the motor was probably a good motor 15 years ago, but setting, like I said, it had two pistons had rings stuck on them, and the number five intake had mud dauber nests in it. But other than that, this motor probably would have ran fine, but because I the motor had set so long, I decided it'd be best to tear it down. And, I mean, the labor is the same for tearing it down and putting it back together with the same parts or um, putting new parts in it. So we went ahead and, and, and put new rings and bearings and all new gaskets and seals in it so that we should have, you know, a good life with no problems. And that was the whole purpose for tearing this thing down. I mean, it, it, it might would have ran, probably would have used a little bit older to start with. The mud dauber's nest might have caused an issue, and it might not have. I mean, it might have blown right out the exhaust and not caused any damage, but we didn't know that. But now we know that this thing is going to be a, a good engine for a good while. So that was the whole purpose in it. And it was relatively cheap because, uh, you know, all we had was just a few parts in it. And they were quality parts. Um... So, might do a video of putting the heads on and adjusting the valves, and that will be it. Alright, thanks.